Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Wow. <laughs> Thank you, woman of God. Thank you, praise and worship, powerful. Thank you for the anointing. Hallelujah. Um. <laughs> ah, first of all, I'm honored to be here. Um, some of us would rather run away <laughs> instead of standing here, but we thank God. Hallelujah. Um, first of all, I would like to thank God for this opportunity. You know, it's not by might, neither by power. And I would like really to thank God for this opportunity that was given unto me. You know, it's an opportunity to grow and to discover and so much more. Hallelujah. And I also would like to thank Pastor Malix for this great opportunity. Yeah. Um, I really thank his life that, you know, he has given, really given us a great opportunity to grow in this place. Hallelujah. Happy Sunday, everybody. <laughs> Amen. So, um, the first time I was here, I was giving some highlighted, a review. <laughs> uh, by God's grace, I'm hoping that I can beat the time and I'll be able to remember how I wish I got all the highlighted. Some of them I forgot, but God is great. Hallelujah. Um, um, the title of, one of the message today is Spiritual Wisdom, which is listed in Corinthians 2, 6 to 14. Hallelujah. And please, next slide. I want us to start next, to start with an introduction. Hallelujah. You know, this month we'll be talking about the wisdom of God. You know, oh, from last month to this month, it has been really a challenge month for me with so many things going on, and, you know, and here we are, we have to go to the sovereignty of God, and now we are still landing on the wisdom of God, and truly, it's, it's really a pleasure for us to, for me personally, to, 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 to really get to go deeper, hallelujah. Um, okay, so when we talk about the wisdom of God, you know, everything has been spoken, hallelujah. I'm just coming to add, but everything has been spoken. When you talk about the wisdom of God, we are talking about what is nature, the nature of God. We are talking about how God is wise. And I really like because it's the fact that who is who God is, is, is comprised in wisdom. You know, his um, is ability to interrelate, interrelate his nature that he has comprised in, 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 in uh, that. Amen. <laughs> it's ability to interrelate his attribute. You know, God has so many attributes that he accomplished what he predestined purpose. So this is taken from uh, Ephesians, which says that having been predestined according to the plan of him, according to the plan of him, work out everything in conformity with the purpose of his will. Amen. And we as a believer, when we walk through the sovereignty, through the wisdom, we learn so much about the, the, the sovereignty of God and how God is wise. But we are talking about how the God, you know, all his attribute. But I really, I'm really wonderful. I'm really marveled because all these attributes, actually, knowing all these attributes is the fundamental is the fundamental key for us to live a Christian life. It's not just about to live, but also to walk in obedience, in trusting and seeking the wisdom of God. Because if you know all these things, it's a key for us to be able to trust and obey and, and be able to know and to seek the Lord more. Hallelujah. Next slide. But before we move to our topic of today, I want us to, to take in the coupon, because we talk about the spiritual wisdom, which was a, the first time when I heard the title, I was like, mm. My goodness, I really don't know what to say about it, but God in his mercy, hallelujah. The Bible says that God is spirit, which is in John, John 4. And 
You know, it says that God is spirit and his worshipers might worship in spirit and truth. But we also learn through the scripture that we are spiritual beings created in the image of God. Hallelujah. And Paul testified it by listening in Corinthian and Roman. Roman says that God whom I serve in my spirit, in my spirit, he preached the gospel of, the, of his son. Hallelujah. So by saying that, you know, he was just testifying that we are spiritual beings. But what the Bible said and what God was saying it was that those that those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Hallelujah. When we are coming to the knowledge of understanding the wisdom of God, it's comprised with so many other things. It's not just about knowing the scripture. It's not about you having the Bible and get to read the Bible. Everybody read the Bible. Even the devil read the Bible. Muslim read the Bible. But there's another dimension out of it, out of his wisdom in the scriptures. Hallelujah. And it says that those who worship must worship him in spirit and in truth. And that are the true worshipers. The true worshiper that Father is seeking. God in the beginning was says that in the, in the last days, I'll pour out my spirit. Hallelujah. In all flesh, why? Because he was seeking for people that worship him in spirit and in truth. Hallelujah. So, you know, if you look about that, why? When we ask ourselves, why do we have to worship God in spirit and in truth? Because those are the kind of worshipers that will be able to fully know, to fully walk in the mystery of God. Because the scripture says that in, 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 in Colossians, in Colossians 3, it says that my, this was Paul's, and my goal is that they may be encouraging heart and uniting so, so that what? So that they may have the full riches and complete understanding. In order that they may know the mystery of God, which is his wisdom, Christ, in whom are hidden all treasures of wisdom and knowledge. In whom are hidden? In Christ Jesus. Christ is the wisdom of God. As listen in Corinthians 1.23 that says that, in, especially in 24, verse 24, said that by those who are called, both Jew and Greek. God was not calling just the, the Jew. He was calling all humanity. Hallelujah. He was calling and said that all those that Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. Who is Christ? So Christ is the wisdom of God. And, and that it is in Christ that the treasure of those wisdom. Next slide. That treasure of this wisdom and knowledge are hidden. You cannot find this wisdom outside of Christ. That's why when we talk about the wisdom of God, we are talking about all the another full dimension of it because though God has created all things, but remember, this scripture was given to us as a, we said that for Jew and Greek, but this scripture was given to us as a Greek in the later days. Hallelujah. But how now, how do you say that, you know, for us to be able to walk in that wisdom, um, if we're able to walk in our wisdom, there are steps that we take as a Christian. Hallelujah. But it says that the wisdom, the wisdom and the treasure that are hidden in Christ is regarded, is regarded is the word of God and his purpose. Hallelujah. And we as Christians, we are called according to the purpose of God. I may ask now, like, do you know the, the, the purpose of God for you? You say, I know. How do you know them? It was revealed, right? Hallelujah. So this was poor because, you know, the truth about it is not understood by physical means. It's not understood by physical means, but only revealed with God the Father. That is kind of the, spirit, the wisdom that we are seeking. The wisdom that comes from above, hallelujah, is not revealed by physical by flesh and blood, but only revealed by the Spirit. That's why in Matthew 16, is, this is my, I like this scripture. In Matthew 16, it talks about, you know, Jesus going to the region of Caesarea and Philip and asking the disciples, oh, who do people say I am? 
who do people say that I am? And these people are like, oh, some said you are Elijah, some say you are Jeremiah and the prophet, you are in the, you know, all these things. But Jesus still says, who do you say I am? And Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the son of a living God. Jesus replied, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, by, by my Father in heaven. And in, my, in, the, in, the, next, in the next scripture, 11, Matthew, Jesus, this was Jesus saying that, you know, because, you know, that at the time Jesus was praising God, that I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and learned and revealed them to the little children. What was hidden? What was revealed? The wisdom. Hallelujah. It was revealed. The wisdom was revealed. Hallelujah. So when you are going, so when, when we see that wisdom is, is, is comprised, it's not something that you just, you know, say like, okay, um, you are in the world, you don't believe in Jesus, and you are just there. We're like, okay, so I don't have wisdom. I just want to go and pick the Bible and read and get some insight and wisdom on it. You won't get it. Because there are people already doing it. Isn't it? The Pharisees did it. Did they see there? No. It was a, what? Not discerned by, the, by physical, but discerned by the spirit. Hallelujah. So in the next, next, ne next slide. So in a verse of today, I want us to look at few aspects. Because when you talk about the wisdom, um, we have two wisdom. But it says that, from, um, verse 6 says that we do, however, speak the message of wisdom. Among the mature. In King James, it says that we impact wisdom. Hallelujah. It says that, but not the wisdom of this age or the rule of this age who are coming to nothing, but we declare God's wisdom, a mystery that has been hidden and that God destined for our glory before time began. None of the ruler of this age understood it, for if they had, they would not crucify the Lord of glory. So if you look at this passage, Paul was said that speak the message of wisdom among the mature. I mean, sincerely speaking, when we stand right now and we go in a society, you as 18, 20, or your 30 years old, and you stand among the mature, which are people that are much mature and oldly, they have lived, they have experienced a life, there is nothing you can say, right? Because even Job, in his own understanding there, the older people, they came first. They start put some senses on him. But who was the last who came? The youngest one he came. Was like, mm, Job. I mean, like, you did something, right? But why that he have to come last? But Paul was not saying, so, we speak the message of wisdom. How does he speak the message of wisdom? If it doesn't have all the knowledge, it doesn't have all the experience, it doesn't have all that it takes to stand among those that are old and sit in, you know, and, and, and speak wisdom. But it says that this wisdom is not the wisdom of this age. Hallelujah. But it's the wisdom that we declare, the wisdom that is a mystery that has been hidden. It is, this wisdom is a mystery that is hidden in who? In Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. And it's the same passage that says in James. I just like how it qualified this wisdom because it said that it is hidden. But God, in his own wisdom, in an unsearchable heart, he have destined for us. Hallelujah. You have destiny for you. You have destiny for me. You have destiny for, you, for each and every one of us. Hallelujah. And it's the same path that James 3 says in 7, said that which when you look at it, you say that there is a wisdom of God and a wisdom of this age, which a wisdom of God is a wisdom that comes from heaven, from above, from God himself. And it's a wisdom of this age which is earthly, unspiritual, and demonic. That description. <laughs> I just went to read the like that. I was like, demonic? Wow, this is deep. I mean, it's not from God. That's what we're just saying. It is not from God. 
it's just from this earth or whatever it is, but we come from it. I just want us to read while we are following the key. He said that, who is wise and understanding among you? Let them show it by their good life, by deed done in humility that come from wisdom. But if you harbor, harbor bitter envy, selfish ambition in your heart, do not boast about it or deny the truth. Such wisdom does not come from heaven, but is earthly, unspiritual, demonic. For where you have envy, selfish ambition, there you find disorder and envy and uh, evil practice. But the wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all pure, peace, love, considerate, submissive, full of mercy, good fruit, impartial, and sincere. So we see the quality of wisdom of God and we also see the, the, the quality of wisdom of this world, which is totally different, totally opposite to what God tells us to present. Because it says that those that have it, let them show by what? By their good life. I like what's in Gideon, by their honorable life. The way of the life they're going to live is honorable. To who? Not to the people of this age because they cannot understand, but to God. Hallelujah. So when you look, next slide, when you look in these two kinds of wisdom, we see that the wisdom of God is comprised on what? The, 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 the wisdom of God is comprised on what? On things not yet seen. And the, of, this, of this age is comprised on physical things. Things that make knowledge and sense in this world. Things that when we look, you know, it's this kind of wisdom. is those kind of wisdom that you only see. The Bible says that the righteous shall live by faith, isn't it? But faith is what? Is the assurance of things hoped for and things what? Not seen. Hallelujah. So we see that this wisdom is not the wisdom of this age. Which people walk in the wisdom of what they see. But it's the wisdom that is comprised on heaven which are hidden in presence. Hallelujah. So that's why in verse 9 of the same chapter, Corinthians says that, however, as it is written, what eyes have not seen and ears have not heard and what human mind have not conceived, the things that God has prepared for those who love him. Did anybody knew? No. Nobody knew because they are what? Nobody have seen it. Nobody have seen it. Nobody have even think. Nobody can even think. Nobody can even think. Nobody can even discern. Hallelujah. So what is that? It is the wisdom of God. What eyes have not seen, it is the wisdom of God. What ears have not heard is the plan of God. And what the human mind have not conceived, it is the will of God. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's why the scripture, the dimension scripture of Jeremiah 21 says that I know the plan that I have for you, declares the Lord. This was the Lord speaking. I know the plan that I have for you, plan to prosper you and not to harm you, plan to give you a hope and a future. What is faith? He was to give you what? A hope and a future. God has destined you for something. And they say, you have a plan for you, you have a purpose for you, you have a way for you. Hallelujah. And the Bible says in Romans, says that all the depth of the riches of wisdom and knowledge of God, how unsearchable are his judgment. And his path beyond, beyond tracing out. His path are beyond tracing out. You will not understand it. That's why, you know, when we are in this conference, conference of Nia, that, 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 that preacher really touched my heart because I understood what he was speaking. He said that if you walk in the wisdom of God or in the ways of God, people call you foolish. You are foolish. I mean, what are you doing? Because nobody can understand them. They are unsearchable. Who have known the mind of God? Hallelujah. He said that who have known the mind of God that has, has been his counselor and who has even given God 
who was even given to God that should replay them. It said that for, for from him and through him and for him are all things. Through him, for him are all things. The, the Bible says that what? That we no longer live for ourselves, isn't it? But we live for the one that gave his life for us. You cannot search the man of God. You will not know. But we know. Hallelujah. We know. Amen. Hallelujah. Next slide. And how we know? By wisdom. Wisdom that was given. So um, I just want to ask, what is spiritual wisdom? Because we have been speaking about wisdom all this while, right? What is spiritual wisdom? Spiritual wisdom is God's wisdom revealed by the Spirit. What is revealed by the Spirit? The Word of God. The Word of God. They are the things not carnal, but spiritual. Not understood by the spirit mentality. By physical mentality, I mean. But spiritual. In which is only understood and walk by spiritual people. Who? Those that God have called them. Hallelujah. He said that those that God have called them, who? The true worshiper of God. Those that will worship God in spirit and in truth. Hallelujah. And I like, uh, uh, let's read our verse 10. It says that from 10 to, to, to 13, it says that these are the things God has revealed to us by his spirit. Jesus was speaking to Peter that this revelation that you have, it was revealed to you by my father in heaven. Hallelujah. It said that the spirit search all things, even the deep things of God, for whom the person thought accept their own spirit within them. In the same way, no one knows the thoughts of God except the spirit of God. Hallelujah. And what we have received is not the spirit of the world, but the spirit is not the spirit of the world, but the spirit whom is from God, so that we may understand what God has freely given us. This is what we speak. What we speak, wisdom. Not with word taught us by human wisdom, but with word taught by the spirit. We were taught by the Spirit. Explain what the Spirit, the Spirit explain spiritual realities. They are not understand by flesh and blood. They are not understand with the things of this world. They are not understand. But it's only by the Spirit of God. He is the one who search. The mind of God. Hallelujah. That's why the Bible says in Galatians 5, 16, 20, and Romans 8, says that walk by the Spirit and live by the Spirit. Walk by the Spirit, not grandfather the desire of flesh, and live by the Spirit. And keep the step with the Spirit. Hallelujah. And in Romans, says that what? Those that do that, they are what? Sons of God. Hallelujah. So, brothers and sisters, this wisdom, it's only for those people that are spiritual. Spiritual wisdom is only for people that are spiritual. But the good news is that we have that wisdom. Hallelujah. We have that wisdom. You have the wisdom of God. Amen. Amen. But spiritual wisdom is another dimension of God's wisdom in which can be imparted to each and every one of us. Because yes, you can be wise, right? 
You can observe the scripture. That's what all these Pharisees and people of the law did. They knew the law. I mean, what is this? It's the word of God. They knew the law. They knew they have. But what was lacking? What was lacking? Amen. And for us to understand this wisdom, we also have to understand how God operates, how God works. And the way we get all that information is from the word of God. It's strongly through the fellowship with the Lord. The fellowship with the word of God that you'll be able to walk in that dimension. Hallelujah. In Deuteronomy, I like what in Deuteronomy says. It said that the secret things belongs to what? To the Lord our God. But the things that are revealed, the things that are revealed belong to us and to our children forever. That you may do all the words of his law. It's revealed that we may do all the words of his law. That should walk in obedience to him. That should live in him. Hallelujah. And, you know, we are still in a definition that the, the, the wisdom of God is what is the hidden wisdom. Deep things of God as listed in John 14. The, 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 I'm just going to read it. It says that by the advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things. And he will remind you of everything I've said to you. And 16 says that he will guide you into all truth. Who is truth? The Lord. And he will not speak of his own. He will speak only what he hears. And he will tell you what is yet to come. The reason why we are learning about wisdom this month is because we want to walk in that wisdom. We want to be wise. Right? We want to, we want to live according to God. God says you, you are spirit. You are God's image. If God is wise, that means you have to be wise. If God is wise, that means you have to walk in that dimension. Hallelujah. He said that he has, he, there are things in God that are hidden. But he said that he has made revealed to us. Hallelujah. So I want to bring some few examples of people who walk in that dimension. And the first, the first group is Joseph and Daniel. I mean, when you look really closely to the life of Joseph, you see that Joseph was wise, right? Why? He feared the Lord. Joseph was very wise because he feared the Lord. And because of his reverence to the Lord, he worked in that dimension. Daniel also did. But remember, both, 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 both Joseph and, 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 and Daniel, they both were taken out of their land, isn't it? Both of them, they went in a strange land, isn't it? Where they display the wisdom of God. How? It says, it says that it's by fearing God. Joseph's case was that he didn't want to compromise. He said, I can do that. And Daniel, he also didn't want to compromise. I cannot eat that. But this is how things come to us. By walking, by living in a reverence with the Lord. Hallelujah. So I, I like what Daniel saw because though God has given them this spiritual wisdom so that they may know. Because they, remember that Jesus is saying that he will tell you things yet to come. Hallelujah. So it's the mission said that then in Daniel 2, and I just read, I'm just going to read. Then the mystery was revealed to Daniel. The mystery was revealed to Daniel in a vision at night. Hallelujah. And Daniel blessed the Lord of heaven. And Daniel answered and said, blessed be the name of God forever and ever in whom belong the wisdom and might. 
It changed time and season. It removed king and set them in up king and give wisdom to the wise, the knowledge to those who have understanding. Underline that one. It give wisdom to the wise and knowledge to those that have understanding. I like it. And reveal deep things hidden. Underlight it. And, no, and he knows what is in the dark and the light dwell in him. To you, O God of my Father, I give thanks and praise for you have given me. This was Daniel speaking. He has given me wisdom and might. Who give? God. Give him what? Wisdom and might. And I've now and, and have now made known to me what we ask of you. For you have made us, you have made, you have made known to us the king's matter. I hope everybody's with me. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It was really hard to swallow, but I managed to swallow. <laughs> I hope everybody's with me. He says that, he says that he has given wisdom and might. He said that. He has made me know what we ask of him. He has made know what the king's matter. Joseph said the same thing. He said that it's God who made know. It's God who revealed. But the scripture said that God revealed to what? To redeem. Isn't it? Hallelujah. So I, I, the another group is what Paul, Philip, John, and the disciples. I just want you to capture the dimension of how God revealed and how the wisdom of God is displayed on these people. It says that when we are worshiping the Lord and when you are worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit says, set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work of which I have called them. Hallelujah. And in, 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 in 16, it says that a vision appeared to Paul at night. A man of Macedonia is standing there urging him and saying, come over to Macedonia and help us. And when Paul had seen the vision, he immediately sought to go to the Macedonia, concluding that God has called us to preach the gospel to them. Hallelujah. And in, this is what case of Philip said, said that, arise, this was the angel of the Lord speaking to Philip, arise and go toward the south along the road which goes to, it go down from Jerusalem to Gaza in the desert. This was the spirit revealing to them what, what God wanted them to do. This was the spirit revealing what they were called to do. This was the spirit how directing them. That is wisdom. Because the wisdom that we are talking about, yes, is the wisdom of God, but it's the dimension of spiritual Hallelujah. And many other like Jonas, Elijah, the prophet, and even Isaiah, in the case of Zedekiah's life, the king, which, which in, in God's wisdom, just said that, okay, so go and tell my servant that he's going to die. I mean, he's going to die. This wisdom was revealed to Isaiah to go and tell. But remember, God revealed to redeem, right? And this was Ezekiah after receiving what he had in his, what? He was wise. He went in what? In his knee. He said, Lord, have mercy on me. Remember me, what I did. Hallelujah. So we see that, you know, all these people we have displayed the example, they get wisdom. They had wisdom. In one dimension and another. And that wisdom was revealed to them in different ways. Hallelujah. But remember that the wisdom of the spiritual wisdom is the revelation of the word of God. The wisdom, spiritual wisdom is the revelation of the word of God. God says that I have planned for you, right? I have planned that you do this and you do that. But who do say it? The word of God. The word of God is the one who said it. But how do you get that word of God? How do you get that revelation from the word of God? It's the spiritual wisdom now you get. Hallelujah. For you to, that will enable you to walk in that dimension. Hallelujah. So next slide. How do we get spiritual wisdom? 
I pray that I'll be able to finish on time. Hallelujah. How do we get spiritual wisdom? The Bible do instruct us how to get the spiritual wisdom, right? First of all, the Bible says that the wisdom of God is what? The wisdom of God is as the fear of the Lord. As written, you know, in, in, in Psalms, in, in Proverbs, in Ecclesiastes, in all those books. That the fear, in, in, I was just going to take uh, Psalms 11110. That the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. I like what I was almost laughing when uh, Brother Ricky was saying, like, if the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom, what is the end of it? <laughs> ah, hallelujah. So we are going to see today. So the, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. He didn't say that it's, it's the beginning. So you start getting wisdom when you fear God. Hallelujah. And I like what it, and those who practice it have a good understanding. Praise. His praise endures forever. So I just want us to go. How do we see them? How do we see? How do we get there? Because say it is the beginning. So it's not enough just what? To fear God. <laughs> you said, I fear God. I don't do evil. I, I, me, I don't, me, I don't go there. I don't steal. I don't do this. I don't do that. I fear God. Really? There are so many self righteous in the society that they don't steal, they don't kill. If you look at their life, they're like, ding, on point. Like, <laughs> They are just on point in my line. Some of them, are they Christian? Okay, hallelujah. So, the beginning of wisdom is fear, right? So, you fear. So, the step is what? What is the step? Because it is only the beginning for you to get the wisdom. The first one is what? Get the wisdom itself. As in Psalms, in Proverbs 4, say that the beginning of wisdom is this. Ha! NIV. Get wisdom. Though it costs all you have, get understanding. They say that the wisdom, the beginning, is for you what? What is the first? To get wisdom. Family, who is wisdom? Is to get who? Hallelujah. And he said that though it costs you everything, get what? So we look on the second one. The second step is get knowledge. Hallelujah. The proverb 9 10 says that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and knowledge of the Holy One is what? Understanding. It was what, though it cost you everything, get what? Understanding. And it says that for you to be able to know, to have this wisdom, you have to get what? Knowledge. Family, it's not just enough to come in the church. It's not just say like, yeah, I don't sin. Yeah, I live good life, sha. You know, like whatever it is, it's not just enough. You have to get wisdom. You have to get God in your life. You have to have God in your life. And if that is not just get, you have to get knowledge of him. You have to get the knowledge of the Holy One. How do you get? By observing the scripture. You have to read the scripture. You have to seek God in his word. You have to understand who God is. You have to walk in the dimension of knowing who God is. It's not just enough to say that mm, I have a testimony. God is good. God is miracle. And I'm, God is this. Do you know him in that dimension? It's about you knowing the Lord. You have to know the Lord. Get knowledge. Knowledge of one. Of the Holy One. Get the knowledge of the Holy One. It's understanding. So the second point is that you have to get the knowledge of the Holy One because it's when you get the knowledge of the Holy One is where you have understanding. You are already close to now. 
You have the wisdom. You accept the Lord as a savior. You obey and honor him. And you get to know this God by studying the word of God. By understanding, by, by, by reading, by knowing how God works. You have to get the knowledge. You have to know who God is by yourself. Who Jesus is. Who is the Holy Spirit. We say that God said God is in truth. He's the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. He said that I only know the Father. I don't even care about the Holy Spirit. Really? You really have to get in that dimension. It's not just about you. Mm, I fear God. I'm not like that person. I'll be like that Pharisee. Mm, I pay my tithe. I do this. And another one's like, oh Lord, have mercy on me. I'm a sinner. It's about you knowing. You have knowledge of who God is. And you not get it anywhere else than his word. You have to eat that word. You have to eat, chew it, swallow it very well. It has to be part of you for you to, to, to be able to get what? Understanding, which is our third point. Hallelujah. The third one is what? Get understanding. Hallelujah. In Ecclesiastes, says that for wisdom, it's a defense as money is a defense. But the excellency, or oh, this I'm reading from new translation, but if you another translation said that advantage, it said about the advantage of knowledge is what is that wisdom give give life to those who have it. It's not enough to say, I know the Lord, I know the Lord. It's not enough. You have to get understanding. Yes. How do you get that understanding? By knowing. By having knowledge of the one. How do you get that knowledge? By what? Getting wisdom. And I like, I laughed when I saw this verse. I was like, eh. for those in Ecclesiastes 2, 26 say that, for, for to the one who pleases him, God has given wisdom and knowledge and joy. But to the sinner, he has given business of gathering and collecting only to give to the one who pleases God. I was laughing. I was like, oh my goodness. I mean, like, you really have to understand what is the advantage of serving the Lord. What is advantage of living for God? What is advancing or obeying him? Because though you learn that God will need to be, God is this, God is that, oh, I have to live a holy life. I have to study the scripture. I have to pray. Why? It's where the knowledge, where, where the understanding comes in. Hallelujah. So I want you to say, I want, I want us just to, you know, with all these three steps, Sorry for online people that I can see very well. Um, it's uh, ill, but don't mind. Um, it is a cycle. You don't just, I get the wisdom, I get the knowledge, I get the understanding, and I'm good to go. No. You have to go back, get the wisdom again, get the knowledge, get the understanding, get the wisdom, get knowledge, get until you go to the grave. Until you go to the grave. It is a circle. It's not just you get it and you move it. Because the moment you start getting wisdom, you stop understanding. You stop getting understanding. You, you, you stop, you, the moment you stop getting wisdom, you stop getting knowledge. The moment you stop getting knowledge, you stop getting understanding. The moment you stop getting understanding, you, you, you don't get wisdom again. It's a circle. It's a circle that we have to do. We have to go over and over. That's why the scripture said that seek the Lord always. Always. When I was growing faith, I thought like, ah, it's only enough. Just you just, until like life was just on me. And I really have to grow up, like grow up and, and see like, oh, this thing is not that easy as I thought. Oh. Like, it's not just you just know and get and you are good to go. No. 
So family, we have to get all these three components and circle them out in our life. We have to be obedient, to learn, to accept. It's a life of surrendering over and over and over again. It's a life of submission over and over and over again. Because the moment you say that I'm not submitting, it's gone. It's ending. That's where the knowledge just cut off. Hallelujah. So there are requirements. Hallelujah. Those are requirements. For you to be able to be filled, to have the spiritual wisdom, you have to be born of the spirit. This was Jesus speaking to Nicodemus. Like, why did he say that? Nicodemus was like, we know that what? That you are Christ who came from the Lord. I was just asking myself that. Hi. I mean, like, sincerely speaking, like, you know, but you still deny it. Hi. Like, it's not like they didn't know. They knew. But Jesus says that for you to be able to get that wisdom now is what you have to be born again. Hallelujah. Born of the Spirit. Jesus says, very truly, I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they're born of water and spirit. Flesh give birth to flesh, but spirit give birth to spirit. You should not be surprised when, when at my saying, you must be born again. Family, when people read this scripture, you must, uh, no one can enter the kingdom of God. The scripture says that we are seated with Christ in the heavenly realm, isn't it? So, this, Jesus now says that ah, I've given you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bound on earth, right, should be bound. So my question is like, is it that we wait, we die until we go to heaven? What we, what we do? We bring heaven down. How do you do that, bring heaven down, if you are not filled with, you are not born again, you are not filled with the spirit? How? You can do it. Because Jesus was saying, no one can enter the kingdom of God. You cannot enter, go and pick something and come down here. You cannot. It's a dimension of the spirit. You don't have access if you are carnal. The requirement is that you get the, be born again. Born of the spirit. Hallelujah. Second, fellowship with the Father. You know, all these scriptures showing that fellowship with a different kind of fellowship. You have to be what? Fellowship with the Father, fellowship with the Word. Fellowship with Jesus, fellowship with the Holy Spirit. The fellowship, it imprises with all that we have been talking about. Living an obedient life, living in holiness, doing this, being obedient, serving God. We have been teaching from January to now how much of being empowered. Fellowship with God, in all true Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. The scriptures, the word of God, prayer, worship, your life. It says that what? Honorable life. Those that display that wisdom, that is one of the what? The qualities. You live an honorable life. You are not envy. You honor God. Hallelujah. As the Colonial said, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonish one another with all wisdom. It all starts where? The word of God. Third, being filled with the Spirit. Um, there are people don't even believe in the spirit or sincerely speaking when I came to China I didn't know that there's such thing as like I knew they were Holy Spirit but I didn't know that it was a dimension of really engaging the Holy Spirit I thought it was just like until I came to MCC when I I was the moment I discovered that that was the Holy Spirit, I was blown away. Because when I came, I, told, I found in MCC is a Christian ground for everybody. Me, seeing people speaking tongues, I was like, they're speaking their own dialect. <laughs> they're 
speak in their own dialect. Until one day, a preacher spoke about being filled with the Holy Spirit, being baptized, like receiving the Holy Spirit. I was like, huh? So, and then when he said that, why they're speaking in tongues? I was like, people can really speak with a heavenly language? For real? Like, I was blown up because I have no idea. I came with a Catholic background. I mean, I don't know how other Catholic and other kind, but anyway, another topic. Amen. So, you have to be filled with the Holy Spirit. There is no way around it. I like what in Act was talking about, you know, Paul was uh, in Ephesians says that be filled. If it, this was Paul saying, be filled with the Holy Spirit. Paul was saying, be filled with the Holy Spirit. And one of the good examples of that is, you know, it's not just about be filled with the Holy Spirit, but also to be filled with the Holy Spirit so that what? We'll be able to walk in this earth. Walk wisely. Because one of the good examples is in Act 13, 8 to 10, which Paul filled with the Holy Spirit, rebuke Elimas, the magician. I mean, imagine Paul was just going to preach the gospel to this person, and this magician was just trying all kinds of things, like, and Paul have to rebuke him. Like, get away of you, devil. You are in my way. Like, he's just a stumbling block. But how was he able to know? How was he able to know that that, 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 that was a spirit, demonic spirit, or just the what worked there? He was filled with the Holy Spirit. Amen. It's wisdom. It was revealed. It, it was not, he didn't get it by his own wisdom. It was revealed by the Spirit of God, right? And he was able to do something about it. Amen. Ask him. The fourth one, ask him for his word. From his word. Family, you know, the word of God is everything we have. Without it, we are not going anywhere. We are here. Like, we are here. The word of God, everything we need, it's from Genesis to Revelation. It's everything we need is there. Now, for you to get what you need there, you need the Holy Spirit. Amen. So, asking from God. James will say that you ask if you lack. If you don't have, ask it. God is the one that gives wisdom. We should ask and he will be given to you. And in Colossians 1 says that, and I like what he said that, and so from the day of our heart, I have n- we have not ceased to pray for you. This was Paul praying. Asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding. Be filled with the knowledge of his will. Underline it. Knowledge of his will. With all spiritual wisdom. Family, for us to know the will of God, we need wisdom. We need wisdom. Hallelujah. And I like to conclude because one, one of the things, you know, I like what in the last, um, last verse says, Next slide. It says that a person without the spirit does not accept the things that come from the spirit of God, but consider them foolishness and cannot understand them because they are discerned only through the spirit. The person with the spirit makes judgment about all things, but such person is not subject to merely human judgment, worldly wisdom. And for whom has known the mind of the Lord, or my mind of the Lord, so that as to instruct him. But we have the mind of Christ. That was the case of the Pharisee. That is a good example. It was the case of the Pharisee. Jesus was the one saying, because Pharisee refused. There is no way. Though they knew, but they refused. And because of refusing, the Holy Spirit didn't have access even to reveal to them. Like, amen. And this is what Paul says that 
Then I said to him, where is your father? This was the argument within the Pharisees and all those people that were refusing Jesus. Where is your father? Jesus answered, you know neither me nor my father. If you have known me, you have not you, if you have known me, you would have known my father also. But Jesus came to reveal what? The father. And John says that, and in John, 1 John 5, 10 says that, the son of God has come, that he has, give, has come and has given us understanding. All of us, they knew they were the father. They have the knowledge, but they didn't have the understanding. But it said that he came to give understanding. That you may know him who is true, and we are in him who is true. So through this scripture, we see that Jesus was speaking about him bringing the knowledge of the word of God. And this knowledge now, it was given to us. Me and you. And it's still available for those that want it. Because to this day, Jesus is still making known the Father. Because as Jesus says in, in, say, in, in John 8, said that I speak what I've seen with my Father, and you do what you have seen with your Father. Jesus said, I've seen. I speak. The knowledge that Jesus was giving, he took it somewhere. The Father. Hallelujah. And it says in, in, in 1515, it says that for all things I heard from my Father, I've made known to you. Jesus came to bring knowledge, came to bring wisdom. Hallelujah. He came to bring, you know, like um, 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 wisdom and understanding of the world. That's why when we Stand right now, say, ask us why that spiritual wisdom is so important. It's because I think it's another, another, um, but anyway, it's another um, slide. But um, that's why we, as Christians, we really need to walk in the wisdom of God, but not just about having this wisdom, but be able to be having spiritual wisdom. Without spiritual wisdom, we can't walk, we can't live in this earth. Because the standard of wisdom in this age is different from the wisdom of God. And that wisdom is only revealed by the Spirit. That's why in our days we ask ourselves, oh, I have three jobs, I don't know which one to pick. I have these, I don't know. We don't want to be caught in that verse that says, that, mm, if I knew what I knew then, I wouldn't have done that. I've quoted that verse, and I believe some of you have quoted also. Like, if I knew hey, that, about that, I wouldn't have done it. Why? Because you are not wise back then. And for us to be able to walk in this wisdom, in, for, us to, for us to be able to, to walk in earthly things, we have to have wisdom. In this wisdom, is for us to be able to walk in the Lord and worship him always. Remaining in his presence and wait for his coming. Because only those that are wise that will be able to stand and remain until the Lord come. They, you know, when Pastor yesterday was saying that the things of this world will demand from us. How will you be able to overcome it? By the wisdom. How do you be able to know? You know, sometimes we, we want to take decision, life decision. We want to get married. Probably there's three or four suitors coming after you. You'll be asking, oh, all of them are men of God. Oh, they are anointed. All of them are good. All of them are wonderful. How do you know that the will of God for you is spiritual wisdom? Because it's not revealed by the canon. It's revealed by the Father. They say that there are books in heaven which are written concerning you. He said, I have the plan for you. Plan they are really written. But that plan is only revealed by the Spirit. The Spirit is the one who makes known the plans of the Father for you. So that you'll be able, to, be able to walk in this earth and fulfill mandate, fulfill destiny, accomplish whatever the Lord has prepared for you. It is not outside of His wisdom. It is not outside of God's will. 
That's why we see Christian, we see people out there like, though they are Christian, right? Even me, my Christian life, I commit mistake. I was not wise. I will not say that I was. I was not. We commit mistake even though we are Christian. But why? Because we are not wise. But God is saying, ask for wisdom. And the, the wisdom is from God. You receive it when you ask. How do we, you be able to know which job to take? Wisdom. God says that he has plans for you to prosper. Some of, some of you are called that uh, God has called the, the will of God for you is to go to the nation, to preach the gospel, right? How do you know which country to go? No, family, how do you know which country to go? Paul, <laughs> I like this. Paul and all the disciples, they are praying. The spirit is a God. The spirit of God is the one that what? Reveal. He said, that's prepare for me, Paul and Barnabas. Family, this knowledge is not knowing by it, only knowing. It's by asking and seeking. He said, ask. Daniel was standing. Daniel prayed. The mystery was there. Wasn't it? Daniel prayed. Family, no. Daniel prayed. The mystery was there. Wasn't it? Daniel knew that the will of the father for him is to, for him to be wise. He said that I am a head and what? Not a tail. He knew that he was destined for what? For great. He landed in the king's palace. Now, how did he know about the dream? About the dream of the king? How did he not interpret the whatever they have? How did he not this and that? The wisdom. How do you get it? By asking. Through what? The word of God. You got a revelation from the scripture that this is it. How do you get it? Wisdom. You get the word of God. But the revelation of that word is done by the spirit. It's the spirit that reveals to you. Because say that you make known. The reason why Jesus didn't explain further. Say that I cannot tell you much further. Because you will not understand it. It's simply fact because they didn't have the Holy Spirit. They, they're not, he said that don't leave Jerusalem and wait for the Holy Spirit. That you may be filled with the Holy Spirit. And you'll be my witness. How? Because they couldn't just go and move. They would have been lost. They would have lost courage. When, they, when Paul went to persecution, God said that you are going to preach the gospel. Hallelujah. Praise God. <laughs> Amen. But God didn't say that the persecution is to also come. Did he say? In the word, he said that those who love me are going to be persecuted. But for you personally, God says that you are going to be a great minister of God. You are going to preach the gospel to the nation. You are going to run this. And you are going to open that business. You are going to build that shop. You are going to be a prime minister in your country. How do you reach, arrive there? Wisdom. Which, though the, the Lord told you to open that business, how do you get the partners, people to work with? Wisdom. Hallelujah. Because it says that God has made known the mystery who are hidden. But those mysteries are for the glory of God's people. So for you to be able to live life, for you to be able to make in this life, for you to be able to walk in this life, for you to be able to make earthly decision, for you to, <laughs> for you to be able to make earthly decision, you have to have spiritual wisdom. It's not a wisdom of this old. It's wisdom that comes from the word of God by revealed with the Holy Spirit. The Lord will make known to you what are his plan for you. You need to ask and wait to hear from him, to hear what he's speaking through his word to you. Hallelujah. Amen. So this is my conclusion, but Christ Jesus says that what we are, we have the mind of Christ. Our walk in this earth should be 
as Christ's work. When Christ's work in this, in the, Christ, the plan, the will, the plan, the purpose of God for Jesus was that he would come to this earth and die for the salvation of humanity, right? But he didn't come in this earth and work as he will. He didn't do anything he wanted. Every day he have to go to the mountain, pray. Every day he have to wait. Elijah and Moses have to come down and visit him. I don't know which kind of message they are bringing him down from heaven. But he says that we have the mind of Christ. Jesus says that I came to show the Father. I came to do the will of my Father. God have a plan for you. My advice is that let no one deceive yourself. Anyone among you think that he's wise in this age, let him become fool. Let him become fool. Hallelujah that he may become wise. It's not with the wisdom of this standard because the wisdom of this standard will never make sense to you because they're not seen. You can't see them. The spiritual wisdom, the wisdom, the will of God, the wisdom of God for your life, you can't see them. It's only revealed by the Spirit. Hallelujah. And look carefully then how you walk. Not as unwise, but as wise, making the best use of time because the days are evil. Amen. I just want us to stand and do small prayer as, as I invite pastor also. In Ephesians 1.17 says that, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Having the eyes of your heart enlightened that you may know what is the hope to him in which he has called you. What are the riches of his glory inheritance in the saints? As Colossians 1 says that, so that from, from, from the day we heard, we have not ceased to pray for you that asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of him in the all spiritual wisdom and understanding. So I just want us to begin to pray from deep down of your heart. Begin to pray and ask God that, Father, everything that has been blinding me from receiving that wisdom, remove it from me. Everything, Lord, I pray that you fill me with your wisdom, spiritual wisdom. I shall not walk by the flesh. I shall not walk by the flesh. Not to my circumstances. Not determine what the wisdom of these people say. That say that you cannot do that because you fell. You cannot walk there because you will not do it. But if God says that you can do it, it's the wisdom of the revelation of knowledge of what God wants for your life that to prevail. So pray that Father, fill me with your wisdom. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for speaking to us one more time this afternoon. Thank you, Jesus. We just read today on First Corinthians chapter three eighteen. The one you think is wise, he will look foolish to people. What does it mean? The wisdom of God is not humanly discerned. Ask God to reveal to him, to reveal to you his wisdom, which is different and healthy. The earth also gives wisdom. But we need the heaven one. Father, reveal to us your wisdom. The wisdom which is not humanly discerned. In the name of mighty Jesus. Reveal to your people the wisdom you want us to operate in. 
Give it to us your ways, O oh God, so your will, it will be done on earth as it is written in heaven. In the name of mighty Jesus, we pray and we declare, Amen. Amen. Let's put our hand together for Jesus Christ. Please may you be seated. Thank you.